If you like eating tough, grassy tasting scallops, this is probably your fish. But if you like really delicious flaky fish, uh, this is not it. I, I will I will not eat this. It is terrible. And I've eaten some crusty fish, but it is not good. I'm honestly shocked because I've I've seen people taking these. I've never seen like the finished product of them eating them. The last couple of weeks, I kept saying, "Can I have a couple minutes of your time to talk to you about something?" This is what it was about. Uh, I know Flair tried one. He told me it was decent. Maybe that was a small one. This is terrible. I shot a huge one and it was, uh, the texture was the craziest fish I've ever tasted out of freshwater. Plus, I've never seen the muscles twitch post filet for that long. We're talking hours and hours and hours later. That is uh, disturbing and I will most likely not be eating another one of these unless it is a severe survival survival situation so thank you guys for tuning in today for this culinary and dangling experience um i think i'm going crappie fish fishing next you ain't got to go nowhere i got you <laughs> All right, now with buffalo, I got my cold fish. Now, sometimes I will uh, take it out the water. Well, before I fry it, I'm gonna drain this water and sprinkle it with a little bit of season, some old, old bay, lemon pepper, whatever you want to put on it. Put a light season on the fish. But then you got your batter. Well, yeah, the coconut. Me, I use straight cornmeal. I did mix a little cornstarch in 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 in, in this, but I normally use just straight cornmeal seasoned with the seasons that I want in there. This is some cornmeal I used yesterday, so I'm just breaking it up. And I added some uh, extra season to it. But me, myself, I got my old container here fish fry container and I've used this already so the Louisiana is gone but me I just add a bag of cornmeal and I add my seasons to my mix and this is what I use to season my fish it's just cornmeal with season so even if you don't season the fish directly you got your season in here and it will soak into that fish. And you don't want a lot of season on your fish anyway. You want to taste the actual fish itself. So this is a perfect mix. And the cornmeal or the seasoning meal that I don't use, I'll sift it. I'll let it dry a little bit, sift it. And then I will put it in the Ziploc and put it in the freezer. So I always have my bag for my leftover season. I'll sift it out, get any scales or whatever out of that, pieces of meat, whatever, and I'll put it in my bag. So I don't always gotta go into my, my supply. I can actually use what's in here. Cause you gotta stretch out your dollar nowadays. It's sad, but. Degree to man and crooked politics. That's what you got to do. So I got my seasoned cornmeal 
I got my black pepper, garlic, onion, powder. You got my Old Bay seasoning in there. And uh, I'm frying all this. I'm gonna be the only one eating this. So all this fish is for me. However, I got me a toaster oven, a Cuisinart. So my leftover fish, I'll just simply put it in a piece of foil and wrap it. And then later on when I get hungry or something, I'll take a few pieces out and put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the uh, toaster oven for about 10 minutes, about 250, 300 degrees, and let it warm up. And that extra grease from the fry, that extra grease will actually drip out of that fish, making it even better and crispier than the day I had it. So um, I eat some fish. When I, when I have it, I eat fish because it's what I grew up on. We had beef. But I didn't grow up eating steaks and shrimp. I didn't know what a shrimp was. <laughs> Seldom saw a steak. Not unless it was a sirloin. But every once in a while, we, 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 me and my dad would get a T-bone. But fish is my meat of choice. Fish. And chicken will probably be second. And pork, third. Beef will probably be the fourth one. I've come down with gout in my old age, so I can't really eat a lot of red meat, can't eat a lot of pork. But fish is something that I can eat. And if man would stop poisoning the water and the food supply, I wouldn't have to be worried about mercury or anything like that. But I don't even care about that because that's some good eating right there. So we got fish and we got a season mix. And uh, I'm cleaning out this uh, Dutch oven. Just put some hot, hot water in there to loosen that old grease up from the bottom. And we're getting ready to rinse it out here. And I'm so tired of seeing these videos on YouTube. By folks that don't know nothing about a buffalo fish and they make a I'm, I'm, I'm like if you don't know nothing about a buffalo fish you shouldn't be making no videos about it in my opinion because <laughs> they be giving this fish a bad name like no nah, it is not that bad you got to take care when eating it i grew up eating this as a kid my mama when i was young my mom would break my fish open for me and get me started with it. But parents, just teach your, your children how to eat. <laughs> so, letting the skillet get hot on that hot burner and just letting it get all that moisture out of there. Cheap tripod, don't want to stay up. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my grease going. And being that I'm on the stove and I want to watch my heat, get you a thermometer that you can put on the side of your pot. See, it's starting to smoke. Turn that fire down. And just a good cheap vegetable oil is good. You can use canola, corn, whatever you want. Once again, it's all contaminated. So whatever oil you choose to use, cheap vegetable oil does good for me.
Now I'm going to put this whole bottle in here. And I'm going to let this uh, oil come up to temp. And I have it about 340, 360, somewhere in that, somewhere close to 360 degrees. Because once I push, put, put, put that cold fish in here, that temp's going to drop. But we're going to get a good fry on it. You're gonna have grease splatter, so that's something you can't avoid frying. You're gonna have grease pop. We're gonna go over here and season. We're gonna get a little season on this fish, a little extra season. And this is the water that I froze the fish in. Some good fish, man. And people just don't know how to fry it. See, so many people. I ain't trying to be funny, but white folks, <laughs> city white folks, they don't know nothing about buffalo. Because the country white folk, they know about buffalo. They know about buffalo. But some of them people, I don't know. I guess they don't know how to. Fry fish. You can't fillet everything. I mean, you can, but is that a good way to prepare it? No. Why would you want to fillet something good like this? You can cut it into steaks, like tuna. When you go to a restaurant, you're not going to say, I want to fillet a tuna. You're going to say, I want a tuna steak. Because a tuna is a fish that you stake out. You cut it into steaks. Buffalo is a fish that you stake out. You don't cut it into fillets. You stake it. Just like tuna fish, you stake it. But unlike a tuna, it got bones. It's a lot of bones in it. I was watching so many uh, people on U YouTube use this Old Bay. I never used it or thought about it. But I started using this. This is some good, some good stuff. So this is also in my cornmeal mixture. But put a little bit on your fish. Just a little bit. Don't gotta go wild with it. That's all for me. Nobody in my house eats this. <laughs> and yeah, they city white folks, but they don't eat that. They 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 look at that and say, "I I'll, I'll pass on that." They say, "Give me a Gordon's uh, frozen fish stick out of the freezer." That's what they want to eat. They don't want to eat that. I'm like, "Come on." My a girl say she don't want to mess with picking bones out of a fish. Eating buffalo, that's part of it. I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> that's what you want. I want bones in my fish. They be talking crazy, man. I'm like, come on, man. That's some good eating. No, I got bones in it. The other day, I got the nose of a millennial. Because she said, wow, that fish actually smells good. I said, yeah, it's fresh buffalo. Fresh fish goes a long way but she's one of those millennials they want everything from a restaurant or fast food this is my fast food right here it ain't gonna take me no time to fry this up I'm gonna enjoy it why cuz it's got flavor like Uncle Roger flavor so you got that fish Cold and ready. Cold and ready. But while that's getting hot, I got my fish with that little season in there. And right here, I got my cornmeal. That's all you need. 
Now, in St. Louis, where I grew up at, not in St. Louis, I was in the country part of St. Louis, out in the country, but we'd have fish and spaghetti. Every Friday, fish and spaghetti. My mom's spaghetti, my mama's spaghetti was some of the best. And her fry, my mama's cooking was good, period. She was from West Point, Mississippi, Artesian, Mississippi. But she had some good cooking. But fish and spaghetti. But I'm good with just uh, the fish for right now. But yeah, I grew up on fish and spaghetti. I'm old now and I can't eat like that. I used to eat. <laughs> I used to eat a lot uh, of fish and spaghetti. But I can just do the fish and be happy with with, with that. Some sliced onions. Some pickle slices. Some, some dill pickle slices. Or a wedge of dill. And I'm good. So... That's what we got going on right now. And I got my black pepper in there. I ate some of this yesterday and the fish was good. I didn't really use hot sauce. You know, black folks love some hot sauce on their fish and chicken. But that fish I cooked yesterday was so good, which was this. I just ate it fried. I didn't... I, I didn't need hot sauce on it. But in the end, I put a little hot sauce on my plate and started dipping it. You got to get that vinegar tang from the hot sauce. And I'm partial to my hot sauce. And it got to be that Louisiana red dot. Anything else is uncivilized. Back in the day, we had bags and stuff. Those good old paper bags from the grocery store. You could put your cornmeal in there. Put your fish in there and shake it up. But today, in today's society, I just use a bowl. Alright, so... We got that grease. Heat, heat, it's heating up about almost to 340. Fish, that's the dry batter or season mix, whatever you want to call it. And then that I have a small uh, Dutch oven. So my temperature's right at 360. It's that easy. Season your fish in the, in, in the cornmeal. And set it aside. Get you another piece of fish. Cornmeal. Set the side. Now I'm only going three pieces at a time in this pot. Not unless I find me a smaller piece. But during this time, that season is soaking into that wet fish. So right now we're about 380 to 80 degrees. And we're going in with this fish. Deep fry. Deep fry. 
Our temperature's coming down. Coming right at 3 360 right now. We got a fish in there. And we're gonna let let that roll. However, I'm gonna have to mess with this electric stove and the dial and try to keep my temperature or that grease don't get above 360. Like you just did it. Was that 380? It's where it should be right now. And while that's happening, you wash your hands, clean up a little bit. Sanitize. Now you can set a timer if you want, or you can just watch watch your, your, your clock. I got 12.55 on the stove. So by 105, I should be coming out of here. You need to give that buffalo at least 10 minutes. I say, at least. You want to fry it kind of hard. You don't want no mushy fish. You don't want mush. You want to fry it hard. That's what country folks say. Fry it hard. Or people that know about fried fish, fry it hard. You don't want to fry it to a crisp, but you want a firm exterior crust. So when you break it open, you see that steam come out. You see the white flaky fish in there. That, that's what you're gonna see coming out of this pot here in a minute. Or should I say nine minutes. Now once again, my grease has cooled down to 330 degrees. And you notice that the bubbles have slowed down from when I first put the fish in. There's not as many bubbles now, so you know that fish is cooking. And I watched uh, the channel on YouTube called Old School Soul Food. And he told me about the uh, temperature thing. I never thought about it. It's common sense, but I never thought about it. He say, your grease is going to be at a temperature that you want. When you add your food in there, it's going to drop. But as that food continues to cook and become done, that temperature is going to rise back up. It's not going to rise all the way back up to where it was, but it's going to rise up, which lets you know that your uh, food is almost done frying. Now you can come in here, you know, get you some tongs or whatever. You can come in there and move that fish around to make sure it ain't sticking together. I don't try to move it too much because I don't want my uh, crust breaking off. I like to give it a little stir and make sure it ain't frying together. And those bubbles are continuing to slow down. And we're just going to let that cook. When it gets close to them, I'll bring y'all back. Alright, this fish is quieting down quite a bit. It's uh, been about six minutes. Now, since this is almost done, what I'm going to do now, come back over here, batter up some more, and, and let it set. So that way, your coating has a chance to stick and adhere to the fish. And I'll toss it around a little bit. So with my season, coat it up. And I'm just gonna let that sit on this paper plate. Another piece. And this fish is cold. You don't want room temperature fish. That's a bad idea. Cold fish, batter, or season it up. Notice the piece of that fish that didn't get coated. There we go. 
Now back over to my pot on the stove. It's quiet over here. It's like you're in church. It's quiet. Look at that. Fish floating. See how it's floating? That piece is so thin, you know it's done. And with fresh fish, you really don't gotta fry it a long time. It cooks fast. If it's fresh, it's gonna cook cook kind of fast. I'm gonna let these thicker pieces stay in a little bit longer. That got that grease sure is quieting down, and my temperature is almost back up between my 340 and my 360 degree range. So as you can see when you take that fish out the grease that's perfect that's perfectly fried buffalo fish y'all there's nothing wrong with that that's some good trash right there so as they say one man's trash another man's treasure so for all y'all folks out there that don't know Nothing about buffalo, just leave the buffalo out there in the water and let it grow so somebody else can catch it and eat it. <laughs> if you don't know nothing about a buffalo, don't mess that fish up. Don't kill it, just let it go. But if you know, you know. And you can hear that fish sizzle. That fish is sizzling. Coated, seasoned. Ready to eat. Ready to throw down with some spaghetti or whatever side you want with it. Now my grease is already back up to 360. But I got my fish already. So I'm gonna get to my magic number, which is coming up right now. Let's throw that fish back in there. And let it cook. See how busy it is in there? All them bubbles. Okay. Now don't hold your eyeballs close to that because a piece of grease might, might pop up in your eyeballs. So make sure you stand back when you find that fish. And I recommend never fry, fry anything naked. A drop of grease in the wrong spot, you're breakdancing that kitchen. But yeah, you're gonna have a platter full of good fried fish. Buffalo. I have to keep saying buffalo so people know. Buffalo fish. You got farm raised catfish out there. Farm raised now with antibiotics and whatever stuff they inject that fish with. $8.99 a pound for some farm raised catfish. Not natural catfish, farm raised. Meaning they got as much fish as they want at, that, at their disposal and they charge you $8.99 a pound. $1.89 a pound. 189 and it's been 189 a pound for it's 23 now in 06 when I lived in this neighborhood where I bought this it was a dollar 89 a pound so the price is constant because nobody wants it and once they start raising the price on I'm gonna go start fishing my own buffalo <laughs> But yeah, a dollar eighty nine a pound, and it's more flavorful. Why? Because anything you eat that has a bone in it is more flavor. Go to a steakhouse. You want a bone in ribeye or bone out? I want a bone in ribeye. I want the bone in it, man. Always get your bone in. And the next time we come back, we're gonna have a platter full of fried buffalo here. Wanted to show y'all at the tip of the rib. You got that belly fat, that very tip. That's the fat of, of the actual fish, that belly fat. And on this side here, you got your buffalo skin. 
So you got that skin that has the omega-3 in it. Omega-3, omega-3. So you can eat the skin if you want or you can peel the skin off. Whichever way you want it. You got it. Nature made. Nature made. Now on these, these got a little dark. But I think I'm about 10 minutes on my time. I should be good with the buffalo. And once again, as your fish starts to slow down in the cooking process, go ahead and batter your next batch so that coating has a time to set on the actual fish before you drop it in that grease again. And dealing with this your electric stove, you're constantly adjusting your temperature up there to keep your temperature good on your fry. Happens. Oh boy's looking straight ahead like this. Got his he's got his seat lean back, so his heads his eyes are lower than his hand. Barely at the yeah. Barely can see over the steering wheel. Never turned his head to the right or the left around the pumps to see if anybody was coming. Just kept on going. Just kept trolling right through. I'm like, you idiot. Yeah. In a minivan. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> only, only look for the the real troublemakers. Yeah. Well, to me, those are some of the real troublemakers. Yeah, the people that you can't track. Because you can't you can't keep up with them. Uh -huh. They're not legal. They're leaving, they're leaving legal to their kids. Right. Mm. All right, all right, if I open this a little? Yeah, yeah open it. Yeah. Do what you need to do, man. Oh, it's all right. Now that's buffalo fish. Good buffalo. Buffalo fish, y'all. Got the bones. Fish. Let me see if I can find find some bones for you. There it is. That's what you're looking out for. Here's some more. See? Those are the bones that will get caught in your throat and choke you. So as you're eating buffalo, you got to pick them bones out. And then if you get tired of picking and you put it in your mouth, your tongue's going to find the rest of them. But look, put it on the back of my hand so I can see the contrast. That's why people don't eat buffalo. But that's why I do. <laughs> now as small as this piece of fish is right here, it may still have bones in it. Find a little bone right there. So, you 
Yeah. So those are the bones you gotta gotta deal with when you're eating buffalo. But sometimes you swallow those bones. You don't panic, you just keep on eating. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. All I got right now is FMJ, but I'll take those. Shit. I got I got <laughs> uh, I'll take some of that rain jam on shit. Yeah. That's what's what that's what it is. This is FMJ. It's rain jam. Grab 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 your smart tea, man. These are the ribs. Is that catfish or is that? No, a, a buffalo fish. Buffalo fish. It got all these little small bones in it. Oh. I'm making a video because <laughs> I see people on you YouTube. This one guy, he went out, he caught a nice buffalo fish, dude. He fucked it up. Didn't know how to prepare it, didn't know how to process it, didn't know how to eat it. Oh, yeah. So I decided, well, let me make a video so people that you can't eat a buffalo, that it is a good fish. Right. But you gotta be careful. I just can't go throwing shit in your throat because it'll fuck you up. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Look, I 